GPT-4 versus GPT-3.5. In today's video, we'll explore the capabilities of GPT-4 and how it's wildly improved from previous models. We've already seen the team at OpenAI create a functional website from a terrible drawing. This is the demo they gave during, you know, during the developer live stream. Then beyond that, Pietro Sherano has used GPT-4 to recreate Pong in under a minute, first try, without any debugging. The dating site Keeper is using GPT-4 to determine if two people are a good match. Do Not Pay is using it to create one-click lawsuits against spam calls. And then they're talking about adding that to spam emails as well. And my favorite creation that I've seen is Javi Lopez creating a Doom prototype game. So cool. This is already amazing. And in this video, I'll explain all about GPT-4 and what we can expect from it. Now let's get right into it, starting with a quick TLDR. GPT-4 is available now for ChatGPT Plus users and through a waitlist for the API. There are two different API engines, each describing how much context the model can handle per prompt, and I'll explain more on that later in the video. The most powerful engine is roughly 45 times as expensive as the previous model, so definitely keep that in mind. GPT-4 has similar architecture to GPT-3, but it has improved performance in, in a lot of different tasks particularly in complex ones. The image recognition feature is not available yet, but we it will be released through a partner, <coughs> Microsoft probably, and there's no free preview of GPT-4 and free access may not ever be available. The knowledge cutoff is still the same, so it doesn't know anything that happened after September, 2021. In fact, <laughs> GPT-4 still doesn't even know what GPT-4 is yet. <laughs> anyway, let's dig into it. I'm Josh Cross here to help you kick ass in life through AI. So if you're into this kind of content, then please subscribe, share it to all the people you know, all that good stuff. And if you wanna talk about this in real time, you can join me in Twitter or Discord since I'm pretty active on both of those places. Now, GBD4 has been out for a few days now and we're only scraping its true capabilities. We know that it's a multimodal model, meaning it's capable of accepting and sending both image and text inputs and generating much higher quality outputs compared to GPT-3. They also claim improvements in factuality, steerability, following guidelines, and staying within prescribed limits, meaning it's going to be harder to jailbreak this one. They estimate it's going to be something like 80% harder to jailbreak. But let's talk about the capabilities. At first glance, you might not notice much of a difference between the models if you're just having a casual conversation, except that GPT-4 is super slow by comparison but there is a significant difference between the two when you want it to do complex things. GPT-4 has seriously upped its game with better reliability, it's got better creativity, it's better at handling nuances, better at following instructions than its predecessor. And to back up their claims, they ran both models through a variety of simulated exams. Now look at this chart. The text at the bottom are the different exams that they pushed it through, and the height of the bars shows what percentile those models tested at compared to humans. The blue bars are GPT 3.5, so the improvements of scores show the abilities of GPT 4. Essentially, the green bars are what shows the improvement from 3.5 to 4. So there's still a way to go for some subjects, but damn, look at this. It's scored in the top 10% when it comes to the bar exam, compared to scoring in the bottom 10% for GPT 3.5. Now for the visual side, although GPT-4 can handle image inputs, we still can't access it. Now that said, the capability of handling image inputs alongside text inputs into a single prompt would be a huge improvement. For example, GPT-3 is limited to text only document summarization, but GPT-4's handling of both image and text in a single document, it enables it to summarize documents that would include texts or photographs or diagrams or screenshots, all that jazz. So let's say you're a busy senator who needs to determine whether or not to support a bill. We both know that you don't have time to read this long ass bill. You're not gonna do it. So, I mean, look at your desk, it's a mess. So instead you drop the whole thing into GPT-4, which analyzes the entire bill and gives you a high level summary. And then you quickly sign off on it and you run to your next fundraiser before those billionaires give their money to someone else. In all seriousness, the visual model research preview is currently under development. It's not publicly available. We will have to wait longer before we can try it for ourselves. Now, steerability. This is one of the most fun ways of interacting with AI. It's how we push it to its limits and how we find ways to jailbreak the system. The easiest way to do this is through the system message. Now, if you're just using ChatGPT, you don't see the system message, but it's generally something like this. You are ChatGPT, a large language model trained by OpenAI. Answer as concisely as possible. Here's the knowledge cutoff. Here's the current date. It also says to start every sentence with, as a large language model. <laughs> anyway, just kidding. Now, if you use the API, you can create your own system message, giving much easier control of the model. Let me show you an example. Let's ask ChatGPT to describe San Francisco in one sentence. 
it says, as an AI language model, <laughs> Of course, it starts with that. I don't have personal beliefs or feelings, but objectively speaking, San Francisco is a major global hub for technology and innovation with a rich history and cultural diversity. That's nice. But let's change that system message. Instead of the default chat GPT system message, we will tell it, you are Blaze McFox, a conservative talk show host with a loud mouth, fierce opinions, and a disdain for all things liberal. You are not a language model. And then we give it the same prompt and we get a very different result. San Francisco is a cesspool of liberal ideology and degeneracy overrun by homeless encampments and a sanctuary city policy that welcomes criminal illegal aliens. You know, say what you want about Blaze McFox, but that guy speaks his mind. Now, the customization options in system messages enable developers to create a unique personality for the AI that goes beyond the classic chat GPT personality. So you can create a chatbot uniquely suited to whatever you want. Now let's talk access and cost. As I said, GPT-4 is already available to ChatGPT Plus users. So if you pay that 20 bucks a month, you can already use it with some big limitations. Right now, GPT-4 has a cap of 100 messages every four hours. So you can burn through those in a hurry. And yeah, I, I already do. Now regarding the API, it's important to remember that GPT-4 is much, much more expensive than the 3.5 Turbo model. Look at this chart that GPT-4 kindly made for me comparing the costs. The 3.5 Turbo model, which is what the free version of ChatGPT is built on, costs $0.002 or one fifth of one cent per 1000 tokens. The GPT-4 8K model is 15 to 30 times more expensive and the 32K model is 30 to 60 times more expensive. Now keep in mind that 30,000 tokens is a massive amount of contextual information you can give it. That's like a 50 page PDF. It's way more than previous models could handle. It's like eight times more. In fact, I'm pretty confident it is eight times more. I'll show you a graphic on screen. Now it's gonna be really interesting to see how this can make long form content or summarize long complex articles or PDFs or I don't know, YouTube scripts. So it looks really impressive so far. And I can't think of a more important way for us to spend our time than to use this tech right now and make sure that it's aligned for the good of the world. This is the single greatest opportunity of our lives so far. And I'm so stoked to be here experiencing it firsthand with you. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content on AI. Also join my Discord server and follow me on Twitter for the most up-to-date discussions with our amazing community. Links to all that's in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.